Hello everyone. Before I start the session today, I would like to thank Nilesh and the FMJPI team for providing me this opportunity to share my thoughts with all of you today. My name is Aval Sethi and I'm the Managing Director of EFS Facility Services India Private Limited. Let me start by introducing EFS to all of you today. The EFS Facility Services Group is a regional leader in delivering integrated facilities management services across the Middle East, Africa, South Asia and Turkey. For more than 20 years, EFS is well acknowledged for providing quality services to some of the biggest organizations that include leading multinationals, many Fortune 500 companies and large government entities. Since 2009, the company has expanded its diversified clientele through its comprehensive services offering across the region. EFS Facility Services has US dollars 1.4 billion in contracts backlog and manages an approximate total area of over 450 million square feet across the countries in Middle East, Africa, South Asia and Turkey. In India, our national operations footprint spans more than 77 cities covering 25 states supervised via our six regional operations headquarters to offer our clients a truly pan-India reach, aided by an experienced and skilled manpower of nearly 3,500 FM professionals. From the beginning, EFS has set new benchmarks in facility management through quality service delivery and innovation. The sustained track record of near 100% client retention and accolades for high customer satisfaction have been the cornerstone of EFS legacy. The EFS FM portfolio comprises total facility management solutions consisting of over 75 services through dedicated business verticals such as banking and financial sector, integrated workspaces, ITITES, education, retail and mixed use development, industrial, public sector and oil and gas. Led by a very, very competent, experienced management with several decades of combined core industry expertise, past track record and complemented by various quality and ISO certifications and standards, EFS has built and earned their reputation and gained the trust of some of the top companies in the region. With this introduction about the company, I will now come straight to today's topic, which is value drivers for facilities management and corporate real estate. Now the task of delivering value for money is an important part of facility management, but it is often not clear what value is in the context of FM. Many writers on FM stress the importance of the business environment and suggest that there is a strategic role of FM in enhancing business performance. This would certainly add value. However, despite the importance of the workplace as a strategic management tool, some authors have actually argued that those involved in property and facility management do not know how to describe themselves in terms of strategic value. In their view, building operations, maintenance contracts actually dominate the FM marketplace. And FM practitioners tend to focus more on managing costs rather than thinking in terms of adding value. Now, while the idea that businesses use their facilities as a strategic resource is not controversial, but the claim that FM itself is essentially strategic in nature rather than operational has not been widely accepted by most senior management. FM is frequently referred to in the context of providing support to the business. Now this divergence of views has encouraged a debate over the future development of the FM industry itself. Um, now if you look at the evolving needs of today's workforce in times of COVID-19, this has led to a demand for employee-centric workplaces and well-managed facilities that promote wellness, boost productivity, reduce turnover, and look at multiple ways to improve an organization's bottom line. The majority of the organizations operate from buildings, which represent one of the largest corporate assets. 
And actually, if you look at after staff, it is one of the largest cost liabilities for organizations. Now, these assets and liabilities need to be managed with the objectives of the organization in mind so that facility services and their strategies are aligned with the business strategies and plans. Now, many operational managers actually fail to realize the advantages of this alignment and this can be an expensive oversight, almost certainly resulting in increased costs with reduced productivity and a loss of competitive advantage. It is actually here that the facilities manager holds the key to improving business performance. There is the potential to add value by facilitating improved well-being and productivity from a satisfied and a comfortable workforce, enhancing customer experience and controlling costs through efficient management, thereby improving the organization's performance. But the facility manager needs to be at the business strategy table with the real estate manager so that service provisions are integrated with the organization-wide delivery plans. Now, as a result, the focus on efficient management of spaces has shifted to the FM and the role of facilities management professionals is changing and becoming increasingly strategic. Now, today, the expectation is for them to be more responsible for adding strategic value by managing a workplace experience that helps to attract and retain talent, implementing new technologies to improve employee productivity and engagement, for example, and also reducing costs and environmental impact. The growing emphasis on facilities has integrated the FM function to the larger scope of core business activities. Now, when we look at aspects of a better experience and increased productivity, there are a number of technology tools that are available to the facility managers today. <coughs> and these actually enable them to prove the strategic value in a constantly changing and progressively data driven business environment. The focus of companies today is also to look at ways and means of putting greater emphasis on increasing productivity as well as trying to attract and retain top talent. FM professionals need to keep pushing themselves to be recognized as high value resources. Um, <coughs> which actually require awareness of the strategic importance of FM. Now, big change also coming in is to look at the FM professionals that come with technical qualifications and mindset. and recruiting also technologically minded millennials to meet the needs of an ever evolving business environment. Now let's look at another aspect of embracing new strategies to keep the business moving forward. Now cost reduction, risk management, and ensuring that operations and maintenance are run efficiently will always remain at the heart of facility management for now. But the changing importance of facility management actually means that the FM managers need to embrace their new strategic function and also build the team skill set to prevent being left behind. So today, if you actually look at facilities management is ripe for a disruption because it lags behind some of the other functions in both digital maturity and also the penetration of technology. Although technology is available for facility management, but there are several obstacles that have inhibited adoption. Now, for example, a lack of digital skills within the function. So you have to hire people who come with that mindset and the skill set. Then there are other priorities for leadership. And also there's a focus on continuous cost cutting. So every time there is a case for introduction of technology which comes at a cost that is pushed behind because of cost concerns. Now let's also look at some of the major factors that are driving growth in this industry. And the first major factor that obviously comes to mind 
is about economic and the regulatory developments that are taking place. Now today the organizations are generally looking for a partner that will help them to protect the investment that they have made in facility assets. Also to manage the delivery of the facility services to minimize the interruptions to their core business and look for ways to deliver added value both from the assets point of view and the services they already deliver and probably other additional value added services. Now what are clients looking for? Clients are looking for all this while at the same time expecting improved cost performance, uh, mitigation of the risks that come through delivering cost certainty. Customers are also facing increasingly increasing pressures from say HSE regulatory bodies. Now in an effort to focus on the core mission, they are outsourcing their regulatory compliance to FM service providers today. But tying that in with service level agreements that include penalty clauses for violations. Now these regulatory responsibilities are driving a new need for a greater expertise in FM services. Let's look at another factor. Um, let's look at increased appetite for outsourcing. What is happening in our environment today? Now, when we look at the argument for outsourcing is typically based on the perception of cost savings and improved quality. Now, this comes through reduced capital outlay on facilities, manpower and equipment for the client, while the provider becomes suddenly responsible for updating and maintaining equipment and the technology. Other commonly recognized advantages of outsourcing include freeing up the resources, um, getting variable capacity, looking at knowledge transfer from outside specialists and economies of scale that are naturally thought to be built by the vendor partners. The concept of outsourced facility services seem to be gaining an increased acceptance in the current environment. The increased demand for outsourcing combined with an increase in service integration is driving growth in the IFM market. The demand for integrated FM is relative to market maturity, which explains why certain global organizations are responsible for driving the growth in the Indian market. But India is catching up and more and more organizations are clearly accepting the value and the benefits of FM outsourcing. Now let's look at another factor. Let's look at increased service integration and what's happening in that space. Now we know that the rate of outsourcing and the demand for integrated solutions follow similar trend lines. Now in mature markets with higher outsourcing penetration, the demand for integrated facility solutions is typically higher and growing while the reverse is true in emerging markets. Now service integration necessitates specific contract standards also and the language especially that differentiate it from a single service contract and and the legal community will understand that this much better. Um, this plan actually specifies the governing structure between the client and the vendor, the performance metrics that provide measurement of performance and a defined process to manage the performance and the relationship. Now what happens from the customer's end? So from a customer's perspective, service integration provides the convenience of a one point of contract, greater efficiency, financial certainty. Now this results in a reduction in cost plus situations. Now as suppliers are held more and more accountable for the spend, at the same time, the customer benefits from simplification in the form of reduced number of contracts that they have to manage eventually more transparency and control because now they build in a lot of KPIs and governance matrix that would also result in fewer invoices that the finance would have to manage and all of this is built around a common SLA that is driven through the entire real estate portfolio. Let's also look at nationalization of contract procurement. Now if we look at the Indian market today, it is a very fertile ground for FM services. And some of these drivers include pressures to cut cost and India is known for that. So, so you talk about India and the first thing that most um, people pick up is drive down costs. 
There is also demand for simplification and standardization of services because customers want to be able to make only one call to address an FM issue in any location and manage their entire portfolio from a single point. So the concepts of account management and the models are thriving today. And these are the models that probably some of the international property consultants, larger organizations have brought in from the global standards and now uh, bringing it into the Indian market scenarios. But for organizations, there are internal pains. There is performance, there is productivity, and then there are pains around retention of key personnel. There is a war for talent. Attracting the best employees is becoming a challenge. Then there is pressure on corporate real estate to deliver a great place to work with an increased focus on lifestyle of work, collaboration, cost of operations, flexibility, uh, telecommuting, movement of people, and so on and so forth. Now let's also look at the market demand for value added services. Now the decision to outsource is moving beyond the traditional core versus the non-core and cost reduction parameters. Customers increasingly demand that FM service providers have an intimate knowledge of the corporate mission and the competency to address the company's specific needs. The companies expect their FM provider to deliver solutions that help drive their corporate initiatives. And some of these initiatives are like, uh, for example, social, which is build around concern for their staff, their customers, the communities in which they operate. When you look at environment, for example, being a good corporate citizen that focuses on the impact of its environmental footprint. Uh, let's look at economical. Now ensure shareholder value in the current state and in the future. They must have the ability to comply with internal and external regulations, particularly HSE standards and have the financial stability to assume the responsibility and cover the risk of non-compliance. Now an excellent FM service provider understands the need to empower the frontline employees to maximize delivery effectiveness because at the end of the day, it's the guy on the ground, it's the person on the side who knows what needs to be done and can take appropriate action. Now let's look at the environment. What's happening in the world around us? What are some of the emerging trends? And what are some of the other drivers that potentially are bringing in value? So from a building perspective, how do buildings create value for the construction industry clients and building owners? And what is the role of the FM industry in maintaining or adding value to clients and owners? Now that clearly depends on what particular concept of value is to be applied out of range that are possible. Now some experts suggest that for buildings, the forms of value include utilities for sure, productive use of their income, exchange or sale value, um, it could be esteem, it could be prestige or iconic value. It could also be a quality cost functionality relationship. Now, similarly, there are some other experts who essentially cover uh, three broad sources of value. First, what they emphasize on is financial value, which is based on the capital and the operating costs and the investment value. The second is about the business process and the people, space and productivity matrix, and the symbolic and the aesthetic value of the buildings. Now for the FM industry, the idea of value has to be strongly related to the performance of the space that is occupied by the client. And not just that, but it should be in the client's terms. Now this makes a one size fit all definition of value very difficult to find because clients, as we know, comes in all and many shapes and sizes with a wide range of requirements and levels of the services that are demanded from the service partners. So how can the FM industry improve its ability to add value to the way businesses approach the role, function, and the use of physical space? Now let's look at some of these key elements. Um, so I've got a couple of uh, 
uh, these elements that I'm going to talk about. And firstly, if you look at is about integrated value. Now companies are exploring the integration of facility management and the related services in an effort to streamline management and improve performance. Now this integration would essentially include a couple of factors. The first around real estate itself and this category includes all the services related to transaction management and project management and all its other affiliated services. It's about greater compliance. It's about consistency. Um, it's about simplification of processes and decision making, which is looked at a more transparent view across the portfolio, which leads to a more effective risk management. When we look at facilities management, all of the tasks that are involved in maintaining a facility and would cover soft and hard services would cover utilities and equipment maintenance and some of the other building services that go with it. When you look at energy management, there are activities that focus on conservation of energy, including retrofits and procedural changes. Um, then it could also look at exploring and utilization of green and renewable energy sources. And this is also picking up uh, considerably and many, many organizations are stepping into the space today. When you look at employee services, services for employees could include some of which also for many large organizations have kind of become standards, which include mail room, fitness centers, cafeteria and food and services and so on and so forth. Now, what are the implications of all of this? Firstly, the decision making is easier as fewer people are involved. Then also it gives a very comprehensive view of all the services with fewer providers, which eases out the management of these categories. And when you work closely with your service partners, the suppliers that provide integrated services can also become your strategic partners for organization. And it's a shared responsibility that's built up. It's about sharing of risk and also developing mitigation strategies around that. Now, when a supplier feels a partner with you, he will also take a step forward and ensure that what he does, does to his best of the ability. Now, let's look at a second element, which is around the workplace strategy. Now, workplace strategy is becoming a key tool to enhance employee engagement and retention and companies need to balance employee engagement and workplace investment. Now, there are several different categories that are actually addressed in this. The first one is around the workspace. And when we look at the work play, workspace, uh, we look at the modular workspace. And within offices and within facilities, the workspaces are becoming more activity based and with the aim to increase agility and flexibility with the changing workforce while decreasing the total square footage area. Today, you're talking about satellite offices. Now, these essentially are smaller format offices close to the employee homes, which provide flexibility to employees and increase productivity by reduced commute time, engaging local talent, and also that employees, when they have IT related issues, can walk in into a facility which is close by to where they reside. And this helps them resolve IT issues much faster. You look at co-working spaces, which provides flexibility in selecting the type of space and period of occupancy, which can offer cost savings. You look at lifestyle amenities such as yoga, meditation, daycare, um, recreation rooms, nap areas, for example, which over a period of time and in the future, as people start returning back to office, will kind of become common features to enhance employee experiences. You also are talking today of wellness designs. Companies will need to invest in workspaces with appealing acoustics, lighting, more comfortable and ergonomic furniture, flooring, among so many of these other features. We've spoken a lot about facility. Let's touch a little bit around uh, technology. Now, in technology, there are a couple of trends that are coming up. The first one is around the IoT evolution. <laughs> Now, a number of trends and developments are spurring the adoption of IoT enabled equipment by facility management, and it's across a range of applications. 
you look at energy efficiency, you have IoT devices. And from the very basics, you can look at motion sensors for light. You could then talk about integrated BMS solutions. You could talk about automated temperature controls, which are enabling more visibility into the energy usage and the management. You, you're also talking about occupant experience itself. And this factor could be a contributor to the adoption of IoT. Data transmission costs are determining whether edge cloud or hybrid computing approaches will prevail or not. Companies are also trying to own multiple layers of IoT stack, hardware infrastructure, and of the software which are emerging as preferred ownership models. But having said all of this, I think around IoT, one big factor that is kind of struggling at the moment is around security, which is lagging behind the development of IoT devices and platforms. While there's a lot of work that has gone on around building a very robust security, but organizations still have a little bit of concern around this piece. Now, implications obviously are that firstly, companies have to upgrade or retrofit legacy systems before facilities can benefit from IoT. So which means, again, coming to the cost factor. And companies today are at, at, a, at a stage where they have to decide whether they want to make that investment or they want to hold back that investment. There is also lingering skepticism about IoT's impact at the moment, which means that organizations will have to develop multiple use cases to demonstrate the impact of these technologies on occupant experience. Now, again, at this stage, there are a lot of service providers who are stepping up, who are coming forward, who are willing to pilot and build these case studies. And I think it is in, in the benefit of the organization that they partner with such vendors and service providers and really test the waters before they actually decide to make those big investments. Companies should also consider partnering with suppliers that have an end-to-end -end IoT vision and the capabilities required to convert this vision into reality. Let's look at another aspect of robots and drones. Now, application of the robotic process automation are still in the very early stages for facilities management. Now, robotic automation is well suited to take over repetitive and hazardous tasks. And I think this is something that a whole lot of us have come to realize. Thus, but thus far, um, a few Asian and European companies are actually leading in the adoption of robotics for services such as, uh, I would say, cleaning, security, and there is a move forward towards widespread adoption, which could probably occur in the next maybe five to 10 years. Um, activities that follow the same process every time, such as sweeping a floor, are prime opportunities to integrate robots into operations. There are several companies, and I will acknowledge that, which are currently looking at options to implement robots to automate repetitive tasks. So I know again that and I know many organizations who've brought in robots for cleaning their floors, common areas, their reception areas at night, leaving these robots. And after they've done their job, they would go and just park um, in their hide. Another aspect where robots can be looked at is addressing hazardous tasks. Now, uh, for example, security patrols or for example, facade cleaning or even HVAC duct cleaning. And uh, this implementation could actually enable companies to reduce their costs and the risks. Now, benefits of using robots go beyond savings on headcount. A task can be performed out of hours when buildings and grounds are also empty. So at night when the facility is uh, empty or unoccupied, robots can easily do these tasks without incurring cost on manpower. It's also possible to save on light heating or cooling for that matter, because your HVAC air conditioning can all be shut off. Uh, and some of these robots uh, actually come with their own sights, as we call it. And uh, they can also carry their own lights and sensors and so on. Now, another aspect that we look at are drones, which can be effectively used to perform difficult or dangerous jobs, like working on the outside of the tall buildings. The use of camera equipped drones to assess building condition and also to inspect roofs is just one example. Let's look at another 
um, aspect which is much talked about today is around augmented reality. Now, technology players are developing end-to-end -end AR solutions that have the potential to transform facility management, especially when we look at applications for warehouses, logistic parks, which have huge areas uh, to look at and also segregating inventory. Smartphones and tablets are dominant in the hardware market while wearables are still in the low level of market penetration at the moment, but soon catching up. And we are very soon going to see the concept of the connected FM with wearable technology. Currently, information is very limited to content being pulled out from maintenance manuals or through user interactions. But content sources from IoT based devices are also in the very early stage. And would ideally be enhanced further by data collected from IoT sensors over a period of time. So maybe in the next two to five years and not longer than that, you will also have a lot of inputs coming in from IoT, which will help you enhance, develop and build a more robust AR uh, framework and a structure. Now information can be visual, can be instructive or also can be interactive for a AR technology. Um, technologies are developing across, I would say, almost every area, but visualization is currently the most mature at the moment. Now, while mapping is still limited to spatial tracking, marker based and shape imposition technologies, these are something that are being developed for the future. Now, when we look at software development kits um, are well developed for consumer applications such as gaming but very, very in the early stages for facility management applications. Now, how, what are the implications for us? So uh, organizations would have to coordinate across several functions to use ER effectively. Companies again would work with partners that are actively engaged with AR providers and pilot technology when the market is ready for a solution. So they have to provide a lot of input to the AR service providers to help them build something that is purpose fit and suited to an environment of facility management. Now let's also look at um, the building a safer and a newer in that context workplaces. Now when we think about our workplace of the future, the first thing that comes to mind is or the concern that comes to mind is around air quality and the ventilation systems. And we know for sure, uh, we may not acknowledge it, but for sure we know that offices are home to many sources of air contamination, including volatile organic compounds. And where do these come from? From the cleaning agents that are used in our offices and facilities, from the furniture that is installed and the furniture that we use. And there are a whole lot of other material that have been put within the facility, which are actually breathing out a lot of harmful contaminants. There is bacteria, there are molds and viruses and all kinds in damp, uh, dark corners within the facility, in washrooms and so on. Now to maintain healthy indoor environment, as you face employees back into the office, facilities need to concentrate on plumbing, on ventilation, and the filtration systems that will eventually filter, dilute and also remove the pathogens from the air that is inducted into the facility. Now, there's a lot of theory, there's a lot of discussion that is going on around and a lot of common recommendations which include use of MERV 13 um, which comes for office building uh, applications. There are MERV 14 for medical facilities. MERV-8 for outside air intake in urban areas and so on. There is also discussion and talk around conducting air quality assessments, testing, design and provide engineering guidance to improve ventilation effectiveness of the existing HVAC systems. Also to look at supporting long term air quality monitoring and creating air quality awareness. Uh, you look at um, adapting controls and sequencing to accommodate and monitor additional filtration needs. Uh, you develop messaging and education for building occupants and these can be through various dashboards, apps and so on. 
and uh, it is targeted to bring in knowledge into the facility. Um, then there are also self-cleaning surfaces and uh, I wouldn't say technology but about materials um, that are being talked about and materials that can be easily brought in into our facilities. So um, in a previous webinar I spoke about copper being reintroduced and materials that were used by our forefathers, by our grandparents and so on and which in the facility we've replaced with shiny materials like steel, for example. Now copper we knew that uh, was bacteria virus resistant. We used copper vessels at home earlier to store water or for cooking. But over a period of time, we've done away with them and now slowly they are being reintroduced into our homes. Similarly, in the uh, facilities, uh, bringing these materials back. So you have nano touch materials which turn dirty high traffic touch points like door handles, countertops into and converts them continuously into self cleaning surfaces. Now engineered with a proprietary blend of material science, nanotechnology as well as green chemistry, its surfaces do not contribute to antimicrobial resistance and are free of toxins, heavy metals and diluted poisons. Well, I think I've spoken a lot today and uh, so well that's it from me for today and once again I would like to thank Nilesh and the entire FMJPI team for providing me this opportunity to share my thoughts with all of you today and if any of you have any questions please feel free to send your questions to me through the FMJPI channel through Nilesh and I will try my best to answer them from um, for you and uh, thanking you very much and uh, so I will end my talk here. Uh, I hope it was interesting. There was value in, um, in the thoughts that I brought out. And it's something that probably uh, triggers some thoughts and some elements of it that you could use in the future. Well, thank you very much. And with that, I will now sign off. Thank you.